Hello and welcome back to Super Data World. Uh, today I'm going to be making an Apex video but with a Python twist. So really it's how we connect Apex data to Python. Because in many ways Apex is pretty hard to deal with in terms of programming and um, building a lot of disparate charts and connections to data and all that sort of stuff. So in order for someone to use Apex you nearly have to give them the keys to the kingdom. Where in some cases we only want to give them the data. So how we do this is that in our object browser, um, I have a table called books. And this is a table, it's a pretty long table, I think it's about 8,000 rows. But this is the books produced per million people um, across a number of years. And I got this off our world and data. Just thought it was a nice data set to kind of show something of like how this would work with a kind of a larger data set and why filtering is important and all that sort of stuff. So I've got this data set here. I'm going to rest the data and I'm going to rest it in JSON format from Apex. I'm then going to do a request in Python to pick the data up and then graph something in Python. And I'm going to do a pretty simple graph because this isn't a Python video, it's an Apex video. So whereas I'm showing you this today in Python, you can also pick this data up from all manner of computer programs. So really it's just resting Apex data and then picking it up and doing things with it. And just to kind of demonstrate that it is dynamic, all right? So first thing we do here is I've got my table here and I've got this rest option here. And this is as simple as it is, right? You just go into rest. I'm not gonna go into authorization. There is um, documentation on that. If you just look up Apex REST, there's, there's documentation on the authorization, and I don't want to go into blurring screens and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to rest it without any. Um, I'm going to rest it without any authorization, right? So I'm resting the object. Yes, I'm going to click apply in here, and this is in the table itself. Now this restful URI. This is the URL that you pick. You can request the data from in your program or wherever you're. Whenever, wherever you're picking up this data from. So if I just copy this, you can just copy to clipboard here by pressing this. And I'll just show you in a browser uh, what this looks like. So this URL, you know, though there's different um, things you can do with the URL. This probably just takes a little bit to rest. But um, there's different um, arguments you can put into the URL in order to get data out in different ways. But this is how the URL looks when you just go and look up the uh, the URL. We've got a what's called a JSON object. So it's a JavaScript object notation. And this is just a way that another program can go pick up your data um, and, and pull it in, right? So you can see here that the items, every single item is has all the columns that we have in our um that we have in our data table. So if we look at this, we have ID, entity, code, year, and books per million. And let's just look at this first one for Australia from 1942. And we have Australia as the entity. We've got the ID, we've got the code, OUS, um, AUS. We've got the year 1942, we've got books per million equals that. And then this has another link thing on it as well. I think you can turn this off in the URL, but I'm just gonna get rid of it in the, in the Python itself, but as you can see, right, you're in items here, and items contains all these 25 lines, and this stops at 25, but I'll show you how you can increase the number of um, entries you pull through. So really, I just want to pull through the, um, I just want to pull through this here, which is items in here. So I'm just going to pull through this, and I'll show you how we do this in Python. So this is now resting. And in Python, I've got a few imports. I'm gonna stick. I'll stick this up on the GitHub so you can you can take it down. And this will actually work because I'm gonna keep my table resting, so you can query my table, and you can see it working all the way through. So I'm gonna import pandas as PD. Import requests because this is how we are pulling in the JSON format. And this is just import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and matplotlib in line. This is just to show a graph. You don't really need to import this if you're just importing the data. Um, just these two things are important here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that URL. So you can see that URL up here, apex.oracle slash pls slash apex slash superdataworld slash books. This is what I have in here, right? 
and I'm putting an extra query on the end of it, which is the question mark limit equals uh, 10,000. And this just means that I'm pulling in maximum 10,000 records. So all my records will come into this request. And because you can see this request here, you can see that the limit down here is 25. Um, the limit here is 25 here. Um, so instead of pulling in 25, I want to pull in the whole lot. And to do that, you just put in limit equals how many data points you want to pull in, right? So that's the URL. So this is just a string. And I'm saying or equals request.get URL. So this is getting the request. And then I am putting, then I'm changing that or. Um, I'm taking a JSON from it. So it's JSON equals or.json. And then my data frame equals data frame equals pd.dataframe. And then inside my data frame, I'm pulling in JSON and I'm pulling within this or.json, right, which is this here, JSON, I'm pulling in items. So if I want to, I could pull in the whole thing here uh, with the whole thing here, but I'm just pulling in items. So it will just give me this down to here. So I'm just pulling in there to there, pulling in all the items. So I'll just run this. And this will just take a second to load um, because it is just initializing the notebook here. And I'm using um, I'm using Google Colab from this within Google Drive. And you can have um, you can have this running off your Google Drive as well. I have a few videos on this. A very useful data um, a data engine just to get things up and running fast. You don't have to install it on your computer. You can just run it straight from your drive. So. I've just done my imports there. This, I'm just getting my uh, rest data here. So getting my URL, now it's requesting, and then it's gonna move on to do my JSON. And this is pulling in a good bit of data. I think there's 8,000 rows in here. So that's got everything in in nine seconds. And then let's has, have a look at this data here. So I'm having a look at just what, what do I have? So I have uh, 8,312 rows. There are my data types there. And this is just a look at the data and you can see that it's pulling in these these here from the start. So again, I pulled all that in there and then it's pulling in a link. I don't want this. So what I'm gonna do is refine the data here. I don't want this entity here uh, for the sake of Python. Really, I just want um, I just want entity, which is country. I want year and I want books per million just for my Python because I don't really need this Australia code because I can use Australia as my, my categorical column. So I'm doing that. So I'm pulling uh, DF equals D DF entity year and books per million. You have to put those in a double list. And then what I'm doing is I just pulling the Austrian country here because I want to show you that this is indeed live. So I'm going to pull in um, DF where entity equals Austria because I don't want to have 8,000 rows in my graph. So here's what the Austrian data looks like. I'm just going to plot this a bit of a shitty plot, but um, just to show you that all this data has come in. So this is the Austrian data from 1937 all the way through to 2000, nearly 2000 and something, 1997, I think. So just to show you that this is live, let me just go in my table here. And I'm just going to look for the last year for the Austrian data. So there we are, 1996. This is inside my apex. I'm going to change this to I'm going to change this to four thousand, just so you can see that the data is live. And apply the changes there, and then in my apex, let's pull this again. Pull the data. Take the Austrian data again. And you can see the graph's gone up to 4,000 now. So that's changed the data. So as I said, loads of things you can do within Python. You can now send this data through any program, any programmer language you want. I just wanted to show you how to rest your tables and how to actually pull them into something like a, a Colab notebook, a Jupyter notebook in Python and into really anything else. Um, what's important as well is that you can actually make views of your data so you can make you can make views of your data so what this does is you can create a new view based on an sql pull right so if you didn't want to pull in if you wanted to do linked tables or something like that have that available as a view i've done that for work before where 
I only want people to see maybe three columns of 10 tables or something like that for analytics. And I created a view here. So you would just go create a view. You create a view here and you just do an SQL query. So I could just go select, what's that called? Entity, entity from books. This is probably a pretty bad one. Book view, let's try and select something else. What else do I have in here? So at books and I had a year. Oh, entity and year, hang on, doo -doo -doo. entity and year. And let's see if this has worked. I create this view. Right, so this is my book view. So it's basically just an SQL lookup. Now, if I was doing this, if I was doing this, I would normally take a few tables and look and look them up, uh, like put them together and make a nice view out of it. But this is just my view here. It's just two columns here, and I can rest this. So if I want to rest this, no authorization. This is book view. And here's my URI. I'm just going to copy that to clipboard. And let's see. I will just do pull the first 25 because that's all you really have to see. Let's just get rid of this. Just pull in that. And then to see this, right, there's my view. And it's always safer to do a view than to look up all the data in the table. And it's cleaner as well. So you just have your two columns here and the view is rested. So that's really, in a nutshell, rest and data and then pulling it into Python. It's pretty simple, um, but there's a few little tricky things that you just need to get your head around. I'll keep the, I'll leave this code up on GitHub. I'll leave a link to it under, underneath. If you have any questions, please reach out. I'll do my best to answer. And I'll see you next time for another data video.